Regards and greetings from the Online Church of Uganda. My name is Reverend Cyrus Mulwana and this morning I come to us with the most precious word of the Lord. Permit me very firstly to read unto us this very uh, particular scripture, uh, this text, and then we shall start off um, already. Romans chapter 4. Uh, I'll read from verse 1 to 12, very firstly. Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believeth in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Praise the Lord. Now, today's topic of concern is works as a sign, not a prerequisite of righteousness. Works as a sign and not a prerequisite of righteousness. Now this morning, God is putting onto the weighing scale works and righteousness. And you will come to realize that all what we require to understand today is the goal, is the focus, the, 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 the ultimate position of every believer out there. Let me ask a question. What is your goal? What is, as a believer, what is your goal? Now this morning, God puts unto our table, before us God puts the prerequisite for eternity. And according to the scripture we just read, righteousness is all what we require for all of us to inherit eternity. For all of us to for every believer out there to be a partaker of the kingdom of God, to be a partaker of eternity, you ought to clad yourself in the righteousness of God. God has called us at such a time as this, when all what the church is minding about, when all what the body of Christ is minding about are the works. I meant to understand many of us on this particular devotion of this morning are very big supporters of this ministry. We support morally, financially, and in whatsoever manner that glorifies God. We support. Many of us are good Samaritans, and, and this ministry we have very faithfully embarked on, even when we have not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. Who is a good Samaritan? A good Samaritan is someone that 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 that, that that, that searches the world around and finds a mess. And when you find the mess, you act positively upon the mess. And that is just who the church is. And that is just who every believer is. But this morning, God, God is posing unto us a question. Are the works much more important than the righteousness of God? Besides, are the works that we engage in, requisites, prerequisites for the kingdom of God, for eternity. Now this morning, Paul clearly articulates it out, articulates it out to all of us. Now let me take us back very firstly and to chapter 3 of Romans, verse 22. The Bible says, The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Now Paul hints right at this, that all what a Christian desires 
is faith in Jesus Christ for them to acquire the righteousness of God. And just to make mention already that righteousness is all what you require so as to inherit the kingdom of God. What is righteousness, if I may ask or if I may pause and remind us? For your own information, righteousness is simply free, being free. A righteous person is, is him that is free from the guilt of sin. And for one to attain the righteousness of God, you ought to put focus, to refocus your eyes on a few things that I want to mention down here. In this particular text that we just read, Paul brings unto us an example of Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, Many sons had father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you, so let us praise the Lord. You know, there's this, this that particular Sunday school song, Father Abraham had many sons, but what, what do we have to sing about Father Abraham now and then? He, he, he is regarded, he is called out as one, uh, uh, as a father, as a grandfather to all of us as him that stood in, in an exclusive, in an, in an extraordinary faith, in an extraordinary belief. He uses Abraham as an example of him that obtained God's righteousness. And for the record, Paul is just trying to put it out to us that we can as well obtain the righteousness of God. If Abraham was able to obtain the righteousness of God, I have, I have, I have come across many Christians that always put it out that, you know, they, they, every time that they, miss, they, they, they perform a mistake, every time that they, they, they run in, in sin, they're like, I am human. There's that, there's that human mentality that we walk in. But a child of God, we are, we are called as, as believers, as Christians, God has summoned us to live a life that is way beyond reproach. And this is how Paul summons his own son, Timothy. He, he sends him out and says, run out into the world and live a life that is above reproach. Now, the gauge of every believer is a life that is beyond reproach. This, this, this whole business, this whole talk in town, this whole talk in church, this whole talk in the Christian communities, that we are humans. Yes, we are humans, but called humans that are called to live beyond reproach. Praise the Lord. Let me run very fast. Now, righteousness summons all of us. Righteous living summons all of us to live a life free from sin. And this is a prerequisite for eternity. In fact, the goal of every believer, the goal of every believer should be righteousness. So as to be heirs of the kingdom of God. Like I told you, many of us are sunk in what? We are choir members, we are good Samaritans, we are, we are head of ladies, we, we, are, we, we, are, we, we are financial pros of, 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 of our churches. Paul is simply saying, all these are good for the body of Christ to be built, but they can never earn us eternity. Works are good. They build the body of Christ, but works can never earn you eternity. Now, Everyone is asking, what is it that earns us the righteousness of God that drives us unto eternity? Verse 1 through to 5 of chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 1 to 5. Paul talks about righteousness through, be through belief. He gives an example of Abraham. He, he, I mean, he attained the righteousness of God through belief. Righteousness through forgiveness. When you read verse 6 through to 8. Firstly, Righteousness we can obtain through belief. We can obtain the righteousness of God through forgiveness. And how do we attain the forgiveness of God? Repentance. Over all that the Holy Spirit brings to your attention, repent. When was the last time that you, you, you repented? Child of God, believer, fellow believer, when was the last time you repented? Verse 9 through to verse 12, he says, we can obtain the righteousness of God through faith. He still protrudes Abraham as a vivid example. What is the bottom line then? The bottom line is we all have access to God's righteousness if we, one, repent. Two, run the rest in faith. Three, steadfastly hold our belief in God. Do you mind purposing 
to live the righteousness of God? What is your goal as a believer? Is it eternity? If it is eternity, then you are left with no other option except to live, except to vie, except to purpose to live in the righteousness of God. Only righteousness, holiness, can attain us eternity. Father, we are grateful. Now may we set out into the world and be emanators of your word. May we now set out into the world and purpose to live righteous for your kingdom and for our own good and eternity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen.